Okay, today uh, we're playing with the uh, Junzi 410 Duo and we're uh, testing a, a mode, uh, a reoccurring problem in battery testing is how do I discharge. Um, today's battery is a 5 cell 4000 uh, milliamp battery. This particular charger has the ability to discharge uh, through its alternate channel. Without any, uh, uh, it'll discharge without any help at 160 watts. And by say additional help, it, without using the alternate channel, it'll discharge at 160 watts. It'll do up to 1600 watts through the other side. So the battery's connected here and it's going to discharge through the charger to here and at the end of this I've built a, uh, uh, a load cell. These are uh, 100 watt resistors. There's 20 of them, so up to 2,000 watts. All told, uh, in parallel there are about 1 ohm. There are 20 ohm resistors, and with 20 of them in parallel, that's uh, one ohm. So we just have uh, the alternate side hooked up here. So to set up regenerative charge, this is already set up, but uh, to show you what that looks like, uh, so we have a program set up. I'll select manage. Oops, disregard. So we will select manage, edit, select discharge. And then right here, we're going to select two channel. As I say, I've already I'm trying to get this little light looks right on it. We'll select two channel. As I say, it's already selected. Since my resistors will handle up to 1600 watts, you can define voltage limit and current limit. For using light bulbs, let's say you're using automobile tail light bulbs, those are typically around, they'll handle up to uh, two or three amps. Run them in parallel, you can get up to five or six, seven, but they only take 14 volts. So in this case, uh, in that case, you would have to set different numbers there. We should be able to do this just like this. So we set maximum in the other one, we're going to have to set the actual current here. In this case, since we're using a quality battery, we should be able to discharge this battery at 40 amps. That's a 10C rating. It should do that all day long. In fact, this particular battery is rated at 65 continuous, 130 burst. So in this case, this side is um, the pack information. This side will be the discharge information. Just out of curiosity, I've inserted a, a little watt meter. In addition, it's not lit right now because we're not discharging. An issue has become, or could become, not what the capacity of the resistors are, but is there adequate cooling? We're going to try to calculate how many watt hours this cooling will take. As you probably noticed, 
these resistors are very much further apart than they need to be. The sound is actually very, very annoying. But this fan is helping with our cooling. And the aluminum tube, the aluminum square is drawing a lot of heat. So let's see what happens. So here we have the individual cells. Here we have the current that's coming out of them. It'll take a second for it to calculate what it really wants to do. Just a reminder of what we've set. Here's what's going through the resistors. A discharge graph going here. Again, terrible lighting, but we should be able to calculate relatively quickly in about five or six minutes, probably, probably ten minutes, what this battery's capacity is. You probably notice a fair bit of the work is being done by the charger itself. Now we're discharging at 40 amps. Pack voltage is at 19 under load. Individual cells already under 4 volts. Drawing about 800 watts. Seven hundred and fifty going through the load bank. And the little bit of testing I've done, the load bank gets warm, if not hot. So we're just going to check here. Resistors are rated at 200C. We're running at about 50C. It's really it feels warm to the touch. Some very serious power through these. Let me do a build on these. On this resistor bank. It's not difficult. It takes a day. Temperature seems to stabilize at about 60 C. Clearly quite warm.
our alternate little watt meter. Drawing 26 amps right now. I'm going to get out of the light here. Drawing 26 amps now. Pack voltage uh, just under 27. Just under 700 watts. The charger will do up to 1600. That's pretty ambitious. We've pulled out about 2000 milliamps. About half of the pack's rated voltage. Uh, the wiring is actually warm. Not dangerously, I mean, I can hold it. The wiring is quite warm. The connectors are warm. Again, not dangerously warm. The resistor bank is constructed with much heavier gauge wire, so that's quite cool. This is fairly thin gauge wire, so probably 14 gauge. An interesting calculation here is um, how many watt hours, and this little gauge will do that for us. So we've pulled at a maximum 28 amps, uh, a maximum of a minimum voltage of four. I'm not, that's what it started at. A maximum wattage of 800 watts and about 70 watt hours so it appears that we have adequate cooling we've sort of stabilized in temperature so this is uh, watt hours the bottom there a graph is showing that this battery is working hard to do this it's already discharging at, uh, well, there it is. So in six minutes, we pulled out uh, 3,874 milliamps. Cells cut off at about 3.3. .3. And our load bank is at 50 degrees. So it appears that uh, uh, it appears the lower you go on the tower, the cooler. So we're not getting very linear cooling. Still, top one's already under 50 C, or about 120. Battery's reasonably warm, and it should be. Uh, six minutes, six minutes, 49 seconds. Um, it's a fairly large pack, and it appears that we could, uh, based on the temperatures, run this at its maximum of 1600 watts. There it is. Hope you enjoyed it.